Hello, this is Frank Monaghan from the E302 module team and in this screencast I'm going to be talking about a paper by Adam Javorsky from 2015 entitled Globalese, a new visual linguistic register. And in this paper Adam posits the idea of walking through a shopping mall, sometimes now called a gallery, which itself suggests the artful use of language and materials, and looking at the brand names and logos on display. And he notices how punctuation symbols are being used in new and interesting ways. And his argument essentially is that uh, what this does is enregister a particular kind of international globalised identity. And this term enregisterment is a technical term that's used and it describes the process by which particular forms of use of language become taken as part of a particular locality or identity. So it can be used, for example, in terms of people's accents, marking them as having a particular identity. Uh, here he then uses it to go further and say that what we now have is this phenomenon of punctuation being used to enregister a particular globalised identity. Oski points out that there's nothing particularly new about this phenomenon. We see it, for example, in the way that languages differentiate themselves. So the example here is Polish and Czech, which are mutually intelligible languages. And in Polish, they use the digraphs for SZ and CZ to make the same sound that's produced in Czech. But in Czech, the written form would use this uh, Charon diacritic, that's this sort of inverted circumflex that you can see here, to make the same sound. But those things then become emblematic of the two different national identities, one Polish and one Czech. Let's look at a couple of examples, the most obvious one being the use of the full stop. And it's used in businesses to indicate that they are online, perhaps even indicating they are modern. For example, the uh, EasyJet company and EasyBusCo.uk dot here. But also you'll notice with Flyby that they even leave off the co.uk or the com. The dot itself is indicative that it is a modern uh, online company. And in this one here, you'll see it in a shop name that I recently photographed in Germany, where the full stop is used unnecessarily in a title, but it offers a sort of parallel forming to the dot over the I, but again marks it out as a modern, perhaps forward-looking kind of company. In this next example, you can see three dots being used, and this is usually employed to suggest some kind of break or to suggest some kind of tension. And perhaps that's what's being created here is a sense of anticipation by this logo. If you look around, you'll see that the apostrophe is used in all sorts of ways. And in this case, it's used in the logo of a coffee company and the apostrophe is laid on its side over the O for emphasis. This example, perhaps echoing the one before with kin, we have a double use of the apostrophe but used as a dot over the I. So again, a very unusual and atypical use of it for emphasis. The exclamation mark, of course, is familiar as a shout out of some sort of surprise and excitement. So it's used here in the Yo Sushi. And it's interesting to note how they have used the letter I as an exact inversion of the exclamation mark at the end of the brand name. So again, a kind of parallelism taking place there in that particular logo. Now, Javorsky has pointed out that it is not just the symbols from the local language that are used. So here we have the circumflex used by the Youth Hostel Association itself, an international organisation. But the use of the circumflex here above the O is perhaps used more for its symbolic content as being a sort of form of shelter, a roof, if you like. And we can see that then in the further example from the Youth Hostel Association, where the circumflex has actually become part of a, a, a roof symbol, but also perhaps even an umbrella, in any event, offering some kind of protection, some sort of shelter. Hagen Das was one of the first companies to make use of the umlaut symbol uh, in 1961. And the firm is American, has no particular association with a Nordic country that it would appear to be allying itself with here. But it's more commonly used to indicate some sort of Germanness and often relating to uh, heavy metal music, as here with uh, Notley Crew and Motorhead. So, in conclusion then, what Javorsky is arguing is that the language here, the 
punctuation is not being used particularly to reference the sounds of the words, although one might pronounce them using those particular punctuation uh, symbols. It's more blending of, uh, as he puts it, the linguistic and pictorial modalities, and that this then blurs the boundaries between words uh, and uh, images in that sense. And so the punctuation marks become imbued with uh, a broader symbolism, uh, as he says, and the emphasis on form and artful design shifts their function from the referential to the poetic. OK, well, I hope you found that an interesting uh, sideline on the unit about uh, art and language uh, and looking at this term enregisterment to consider how the process works for how particular types of symbols or language or words get used to create particular identities, not just for people, but also in the sense for brands, but also our relationship with the commercial world. Bye bye.